Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. I'm Kara Finnegan. I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw, the publisher of Reading the Pictures. Welcome to um, Polar Vortex Week here at Chatting the Pictures. <laughs> we hope to warm you with our analyses <laughs> of photos of the week. Getting all thermal here. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, uh, in the interest of keeping warm, why don't we just dive in, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Go right to the hot topic. <laughs> yeah. So our first uh, our first segment, as always, uh, is the news. And uh, here we look at how news photos um, tell a particular story. And here's this week's selection. The photo was taken by Joe Radel of Getty Images. And the caption reads, Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Donald Trump, speaks to the media after leaving the federal courthouse on January 25th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And um, we all know that uh, Stone is this infamous character uh, uh, channeling uh, Richard Nixon most of the time, at least physically. And uh, he's been charged with colluding with WikiLeaks and lying to the FBI and Congress. Uh, and um, I, I, I think I'll let you go uh, t pick it up from there. Yeah, um, this is to me such a great example of how a news photo can not only document, you know, the specific event of him, you know, appearing right in public at this moment, but how it also contains within it a kind of contextualization of the whole news story. And obviously, the key compositional aspect of this photo is um, the open-mouthed protagonist himself, Roger Stone, <laughs> um, who I think, it, uh, as I've joked, is you know, is he singing like a bird? Is he going to sing like sing like a bird? Um, he certainly seems to want a lot of attention. Uh, but for me, what's really what I love about this photo, what makes it a great kind of image for the whole story is there's this kind of Greek chorus behind him that's represented by that sign. Right. So turning the Trump lock her up narrative kind of back on the Trump camp itself. Uh, and then the fact that it shows this photo of, uh, you know, it's blurry, but you can see it's a photo of Stone on his phone with the sunglasses looking, you know, a little maybe mobstery um, as some of the Trump folks are wont to do. Um, and and so the Greek chorus, you know, is there's this kind of narrative going on behind Stone, even as Stone is you know, desperately trying to get all the attention on himself. So uh, to me, that's one of the really striking things about this photo. I, it's great that you're calling out the sign. Uh, there was if you watch pro football back in the 80s, 90s, I, I guess the guy's still there. But there's this one guy that would always be behind the goalposts. You know, whenever there's a foot, uh, a, a field goal kick or a, a touchdown, and he would be holding up a biblical quote, yeah. and he was just this permanent fixture. And this is, a, in a way, is kind of now in the age of social media. You know, if you look at protests, there's so much signage when people go to protests because they know that the you know how much media coverage there is, and then social media coverage. So, they, they I don't know, if it's probably like a group of people with these signs, but it's now become a permanent fixture of the, uh, you know, of, of all of the um, in, uh, conspirators and all the people indicted um, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Trump cabal. And, and this week there were signs that were, they say, traitor, you helped Putin steal our democracy. But they're, they're always there. And in some cases, there was another photo we didn't decide not to use, but it takes up two thirds of the photograph with kind of pushing stone almost like ah, you know, right over almost to the edge of the photograph. So they're, they're quite prominent and I think they're quite effective. Well, and even it's interesting you talked about kind of pushing them to the edge because even in this photo, um, the, the kind of, I guess, the visual pressure of the crowd behind him and the people with the phones. And, you know, this was a whole spectacle, right? And he did the Nixon arms and he did the whole bit. Uh, and a lot of those photos uh, that circulated show that. But that sort of, um, there's a kind of pressure on him as a single person in this photo. Uh, he's competing right, with this kind of crowd. This is, as I said, this Greek chorus behind him. And that sort of, I think, connects with what you're suggesting, which is that there are, um, uh, there are a lot of ways to get media attention and um, the photographers because of the, you know, the kind of spectacle surrounding the event, they have a lot of visual choices for sure. Yeah. I, I you know, it's, I'm not sure though, like you could say on one hand that when you see lock him up as opposed to lock her up, this is, you can say, oh, this is just fateful and what goes around comes around and, you know, getting a taste of their own medicine 
And, you know, they, they, the whole case is based on the fact that he was involved in and had prior knowledge of the Russians releasing thousands of Hillary Clinton's mm -hmm. emails. And so it just is on one level, just like here's now the ultimate po poetic justice uh, and, uh, you know, kind of chickens come home to roost. But on the other hand, you know, the the whole uh, MO for uh, both Trump and Stone, and they're very open about this, is like no publicity is bad publicity. You know, I think worse <laughs> than in politics than being wrong is being boring. So, you know, and then there's the admit nothing, deny everything, launch counterattack. So on one level, okay, this is the, you know, this thing coming back on them. But on another level, this is just still like the even more publicity and even more attention and, and even more confirmation that I'm a bad guy. And, and, and that's, you know, I mean, what's also really ironic along those lines with this, his mouth open like that saying like, you know, these guys just can't shut up is that the, 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 the beauty of this photograph as an editorial choice is that this illustrated a, 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 a hearing where the judge it warned um, Stone that he was that they were going to issue a, that yeah. she was going to issue a gag order. Yeah. So, yeah, like you got to shut up. <laughs> yeah, but, but but so I don't know in terms of the the dialogue with the sign how much in some way it's like they they I'm sure he's thrilled with this photograph. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're totally right. That sense of kind of bad publicity, no publicity, you know, no publicity is bad publicity. Yeah. And and then the gag the gag order is is uh you know, the threat of a gag order is really interesting then when you read this photo because you know, um you know, you sort of imagine maybe a hand coming in from the foreground just to clap over his mouth or something, right? At that point, like you can imagine it being, you know, performed here in this photo itself. And they're yeah, and this is they're clearly, I mean, too, and he is, you know, this is not your average Trump criminal. This is somebody who uh clearly loves the spotlight in every way. So yeah, you're right. I'm sure he's like, yay, and now we're talking about him too. And he's probably thrilled about that if he knew, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Shall we move on? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> please let us move on. So uh, the next segment today we call the pick, and and this is where we try to dig in a little bit to to what makes a photo uh, circulate uh, maybe more widely than others in a given week, or or what makes a photo a good editorial choice given the you know wide uh, you know literally unlimited number of images that we have available to us uh, uh, every day. And here is this week's pick. Yeah, I'm completely fascinated by this. I'm actually working on an article for uh, Columbia Journalism Review on the visual power of uh, 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 Ocasio Cortez. So this just like falls right into that into that bucket. Um, the uh, this was taken by Tom Brenner for the New York Times. Um, he so he's DC um, a member of the DC Press Corps, and he made this montage. He put it on his Instagram, which would probably be not something that we would. Um, you know, talk about it on, on, on our program, except that it started circulating. And so the caption, the Instagram caption says, um, representatives, Jerry Connolly left, uh, representatives, I guess representative Jerry Connolly left, converses with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez during a hearing recess on Capitol Hill. Um, and then a couple other pieces of informa information, she saw it and she retweeted it and she, you know, so you, you get kind of this thing that starts to roll out. And she wrote the last photo in this panel. It's like at Jerry Connolly and I are on a road trip, buddy comedy or something. <laughs> so that was that was her tweet. And, and you know, now the thing's out there. And, and the Telegraph wrote a story about it, and they uh, and they re repeated her retweet. And then they started pulling comments from the thread under that went with the image and that one of them, which I think also is very um, humorous, but also like they're kind of telling and something to take, you know, be a little bit concerned about it. Uh, this uh, reader wrote, uh, or it's like the last freeze frame on a TV sitcom about a couple of mismatched politicians. She's a young upstart. He's a veteran. And together they're taking the house. <laughs> yeah. You know, to me, <laughs> this image, I mean, I think it's important to note that Conley's a Democrat, first of all, because it could be really tempting to see this as a clash between blue and red and a clash between uh, Democrat and Republican. And, um, you know, uh, you already have that juxtaposition of older white man, younger woman of color. Right. But to me, the story of this photo, this montage of photos 
um, is, is that this is a conversation between peers that is being captured and told as a kind of story. And, you know, um, the, the peer element to me is really interesting. Visually, they're peers. They're right next to each other. They are both talking over each other, talking while the other one is listening. They're both gesturing. They're both, uh, you know, clearly engaged in what it is that they're doing. Uh, and so one of the stories I think is, you know, yes, maybe it looks like a buddy comedy and a pair of mismatched people, but visually and literally to some extent, um, these two members of Congress are peers. And that to me is really interesting. Um, uh, one of the other comments uh, on Brenner's Twitter feed uh, where he reposted this on Twitter, um, and as you said, it really got around in a lot of ways. Um, someone said, uh, this looks like democracy to me, right? And other people said, this is what communication looks like. So wow. to the extent that you have, you know, the eyeline match, the gestural match just happening, um, that last photo, I really want to know the sequence of these photos as opposed to how Brenner assembled them. <laughs> because the last photo, right, really does. A lot of people, you know, um, a, a lot of people kind of took up uh, Ocasio-Cortez's, you know, remark about the buddy movie. Other people said, I would watch that sitcom, you know. Um, so I'm curious if, you know, this is the actual sequence. But regardless of that, it tells a really interesting story about what about what's happening in Congress and maybe what people should be doing in Congress. I didn't think about that uh point you just made uh, and that reaction about um, communication and how much people uh, in the country uh, are uh, hungering for their uh, for dialogue and and for a, a give and take and all of these things that and and of course ocasio cortez is and she deserves a tremendous amount of credit for like creating a little bit more transparency so you know even if they're playing around or this is really more coming from the artfulness of um, the photographer, you know, to like start to plug into that, you know, is really wonderful. But in a way that also leads me to some concerns. I think one is that this plays very nicely for Ocasio-Cortez as a uh, PR vehicle and a, and, a, and a kind of buffer to a lot of critique. She's been attacked as a young upstart, a lone wolf, uh, and um, <clears throat> also like, the, the right wants to say that she's like, you know, a threat to like the older white male, you know, and kind of the establishment in that way. And this breaks all that down. And not only that, but it's really like, I, I'm also, I've got a wonderful sense of humor and I really, I'm, I'm, you know, let's not lose fun in the equation. So this, this is a wonderful, you know, piece for her. And then it starts to make me also think because it's such a wonderful piece for Brenner and it is so much fun. Is it too much fun? You know, as you start to get like a kind of, more kind of intimate collusion here between photojournalism, news photographers, and social media, and the politicians, where what they're doing is they start to all share um, the attention. But, you know, it takes us back to Stone again. You know, it's sort of like how much this becomes like a, po a popular vehicle and has like all this entertainment value. Uh, and you can kind of then kind of go down that rabbit hole almost with something like this, um, especially the way this thing can catch fire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little more optimistic um, uh -huh. <laughs> in, in terms of the narrative of the photo. But I mean, you know, I think your concerns are really well taken, Michael. And, um, and in particular, you know, when I first looked at this montage, I thought, oh, great, another image they can cut her out of and make give her wide eyes and make her look like she's like a crazy talker, right? Which these sorts of um, critiques are made of uh, women in politics all the time. Yeah, they don't sure. shut up. They are aggressive. Anytime a woman debates, she's somehow being, um, um, you know, too aggressive, unfeminine, et cetera, et cetera. And you see that um, in a couple you know, of Women are better too, yeah. to be listening. Women are better listeners than arguers, yeah. all of that. And, you know, my hackles go up as a communication professor, you know. But, but again, to me, it's that montage. If you had picked any, if Brenner had picked any one of these images, yeah. Um, you would have had a totally different read on what was going on. And what he was attempting to do, I think, is document an interaction. Now, the broader question about kind of how politicians benefit from this, the fact that they are from two, the same party, then does raise a question, which is, 
could Brenner, you know, are these kinds of interactions happening across party lines? And if so, are we seeing those or should we be seeing those? Or would it be um, better for democracy, you know, if we had more of them, for sure? Yeah. Point well taken. All his points are well taken. Yeah. But so anyway, but lots to say, right? That's another reason why this is a this is a good editorial pick and why it was a really interesting image to circulate, because there are a lot of different ways you can interpret it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I maybe I'm just trying to like also buffer myself a little. I mean, hold myself back a little bit because I'm sort of a fan. And so I don't I want to stay in the analyst critique place. But um, yeah, she's she's very effective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've talked previously about, you know, the extent to which other people could be foregrounded and it doesn't always have to be her. Either, yeah. Right? But she is, uh, she's an engaging, charismatic um, figure. But again, here, I want to kind of go back just to wrap this up, to talk again about the fact that we have a peer to peer conversation being pictured mm. in Congress. Uh, and, you know, yes, he's a more senior member, although not by a whole lot. He's been in Congress, I think for maybe eight or nine years, but nevertheless, there's something, there's something interesting about that. All right, so here we now have arrived at our last segment, The Look. And, and here what we are interested in is um, photos that have particularly interesting aesthetic or stylistic qualities or that might be pushing the visual boundaries uh, of a news photo in some way. And, and um, here we come back around to polar vortex time, Michael. Really? Um, this uh, photo was taken by uh, Camille uh, Krasinski for EPA. Uh, it's uh, dated January 29th. Uh, the caption reads, a high school student from China takes a selfie along snowy Lake Michigan in Chicago. And, uh, you know, we've been talking at different times about, you know, how uh, aesthetics, uh, the, uh, are, the aesthetic quotient keeps getting higher and higher in news photography. And wow, what an example uh, for the atmospheric quality, the quiet, the humor, the artfulness. And it's really because of the way the sky is working with the background of the city. This is almost painterly. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And it's, um, you know, as as someone who lives not far from Chicago and who experienced the polar vortex this week. Uh -huh, I was thinking of you. You know, um, uh, what, what I love, I sort of thought about it as kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, people and city versus weather, <laughs> you know, the, the, the kind of, um, the array, the, the alignment, there's a kind of a natural V that happens and goes off to a diminishing point on the left hand of the screen where you have this line of these young people, uh, you know, standing on the beach. And then you, on the other side, you've got the beautiful skyline of Chicago. And in the middle is this kind of vast, you know, uh, icy landscape and and they're surrounded the city and the people are surrounded on all sides right by this this uh, wintry weather and so to me I, I I liked kind of the idea of of you know it's a sideways V it's like V for vortex <laughs> uh, just in terms of the the array uh, the arraying of the subjects of the photo yeah a couple um, of weeks uh, a couple of weeks back we were talking about layers and how you can see like you know like a, you know slices almost and. This is really uh, interesting for, I think what you're talking about is the geometry of it. And yeah. It, that, that and like, you know, kind of the black and white and what it's doing in terms of monochromatic mm -hmm. versus color. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but geometrically, it's very interesting. And also like that rule of thirds, you know, the, that figure in the, I mean, that figure on the far right and doing this thing with the cell phone, which is, you know, like endlessly fascinating for us to see pictures with, uh, cell phones this is like the fetish of our our era but you know so there's that but then it's offset and, the, and then this person in the in the center and this kind of looking down and this kind of you know it, it kind of amplifies a sense of quiet and then, then, the, then the person on the far left who's who's looking into the v um mm -hmm. you know it's also they're like they're three you know, who has quiet moments anymore? Where do we like think about reflection or observe reflection or experience yeah. reflection? And, 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 you know, th this is complex in that kind of way, in a subtle way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the taking of the selfie, uh, when I, when I first looked at this photo, um, uh, yeah, I live in the Midwest and, and mostly I always have, and, you know, uh, there's a kind of famous line that, you know, weather is not a personal experience that, you know, you can complain about the weather, 
but you know, everyone around you is in the same weather that you are. So don't complain. Right. And what I love about that is, you know, in the, the selfie culture we live in now, everything is a personal experience. So, so the, the, the student taking the selfie is just this great example of, you know, I was here, there was a vortex, right? So it kind of, it brings in this, it kind of punctuates this contemporary, uh, it brings this contemporary aspect to a scene that you're right, is is very painterly, is very quiet, um, could almost be a painting hanging on the wall at the Chicago Art Institute a few miles away from where these students are. Um, and, and, and I also sort of like the idea that the phone, at least in the is uh, on my screen, appears to be blue. Uh, uh, there's a kind of punctuating there too that uh, you know it taps into the lake, taps into a little bit of the blue sky. You you kind of get this um, wintry color in the midst of, of all of the mutedness uh, of, of all the other colors. Let me ask you um, one question: Do you do you see, or does this make you think at all about you know it's a climate photo? Does it make you think about climate change at all? Or, or is it, and do we have to go there or do we not go there? Or is it, yeah. you know, I mean. What, That's what, a really good question. I think for me, I this image made me think more about that kind of individual experience that you're talking about, that that moment of quiet or, uh -huh. or documenting kind of what's happening um, uh, in this particular place at this moment. But I think you can, I don't think it's totally out of the balance to think about a lot of the images that we saw this week of, of this really, really shockingly cold and windy and, and incredibly dangerous weather um, uh, in, in, in that light at all. Um, to me, this photo reads, it kind of cues that less than other photos might. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I feel, I think anytime you have an image like this, you need to be thinking about that, right? That, that, that the reason this photographer was out making these photos was not because it was a beautiful snowy day, but because this was a new story and this was an event, uh, that was, a, a you know, a happily relatively brief, but pretty catastrophic, um, turn in the weather. Yeah. And I, I think the vortex has been tied to climate change, but I, I think maybe after the conversation about Ocasio-Cortez, you know, maybe sometimes a, uh, you know, a picture about uh, in inclement weather is, you know, a picture about inclement weather and, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and obviously that it's always there, like, you know, in terms of on the, you know, in the echo is, you know, is climate and climate change and how mm -hmm. much this event, you know, was, you know, could be tied to that. But I, you know, I'm, I'm fine sticking with the artistry. You know. <laughs> I do have to say on a pragmatic note, and as someone who walks around on a college campus where a lot of students um, either don't have or choose not to cover themselves up when it's cold, the, the fact that the hood of the, of the student in the middle uh, is exposing his face and his ears and the fact that the bare hands are taking the picture of the selfie, I just want to jump into this photo and, and tell these young people to cover up. <laughs> it's very nurturing of you. <laughs> I'm not Good sure place. if it's nurturing more than, you know, kind of like my inner, the inner old guy get off my lawn sort of thing, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the polar vortex uh, cues visually in many different ways, I think you could say. All right. So we are wrapping up. Um, any final uh, words and announcements for us, Michael, before we say goodbye to folks? Uh we are uh, posting all of the um, border wall uh, imagery this week, and we're putting up uh, highlight clips on uh, uh, social media. On social media, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, come into the post, take a look at all the content. It's it's really wonderful. Uh, yeah, shameless plug. I have a piece coming out in the New York Times Magazine in about two weeks. Um, it's a very very deep dive on a. a, a pretty powerful uh, Vietnam War photograph that was published in Life Magazine, so we'll be also promoting that. And uh, otherwise, um, just you know, look forward to talking to you again next week. Yeah, that sounds good. And um, I wanna put out a call for if there's any uh, teachers out there, I really take a look at these salons if you're interested in doing stuff with students on media and politics or current events or photography or news images. Um, salons are really a great teaching tool as well. All right, we'll see you all soon. Thanks much. Bye-bye. Take care.